Welcome to the one and only Comic-Con Podcast, your podcast for comic book news, reviews, and comic community drama, with your hosts, Nemesis Prime and Milton the Man. Are you listening? Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Comic-Con Podcast. little bonus content. This is our third week of Kickstart October, or Kickstart-tober, what I've been calling it. Uh, hopefully everyone's been checking out the bonus content. Uh, make sure you could still go ahead and do some kickstarting sponsoring backing for our buddy James over at Mad Love Comics for his book Madison, as well as Carmen Costa for Proctor uh, 3. And uh, before we start this, let's uh, say hello to my co host, Mr. Zach. Yo, how are you? I'm doing good, man. Just hanging out, getting ready for New York Comic Con here in a couple days. No, man. I'm trying to get everything ready for that. So, but yeah, right. really excited about today and what we're going to be talking about the new or this next kickstart, kickstart Tober. It's kind of a mouthful, right? It doesn't, doesn't flow super smooth, but it's catchy. Hey, it's it starts and ends with it's what we need it to be, right? Yeah, it's October, <laughs> it's, it's Kickstarter, it's Kickstart Tober. So that's what I call it. Oktoberfest. What about exactly. Starter? Ox Starter? No, it's kind of no, because it's a, you have to make sure you get the kick. Kick, but, kick, yeah. Um, oh, you know what? You know what? I didn't tell you, Zach. And hmm. funny enough, this person's on here on our podcast today. This gentleman actually bought one of our books for our short box auctions. Oh, nice! <laughs> Appreciate so, it. I got outbid on three other books, but I did get one. <laughs> Good deal. I got one of my three. So, <laughs> well, so you helped us by getting outbid. The bid went up, so technically, you're kind of a, a hero as well. So. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yes. So um, that person here, he's been on the podcast before, talking about his uh, career own project. We have Scout, Scott Palachek for his book uh, Marcus. So, uh, welcome back, Scott. How are you? Very good. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, yes. So uh, this is a big week. Like like Zach said, it's New York Comic Con week. Um, we do have your latest Kickstarter that just started a uh, couple of weeks ago. It still has some time to get in there. So uh, for the people that and you're also going to be at New York Comic Con, right? So for the people that yes. are going uh, real quick before we get into to Marcus, tell us where you're going to be at New York Comic Con this weekend. Yep. So uh, we just got confirmation uh, that we will be at uh, CBCS's booth uh, on Friday from 12 to 2. We'll be upstairs and then Saturday and Sunday, 12 to 3 uh, in the Artist Alley booth. Sweet. Nice. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Um, and uh, you're, it's going to be you. It's going to be, of course, John from Jaff Comics and... You have Carmen uh, coming? Is Carmen coming? Uh, Carmen's going to be there. I'm not 100% sure which days Carmen is going to be there. I think he's going to be there both Thursday and Friday. Um, and then uh, Scott Svankara, the my uh, friend from college who did the A cover, uh, he's going to be there for uh, Friday, Saturday, and probably Sunday too. Awesome. Cool. So, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely check out Scott uh, either at the CBCS booth or – you know, in Artist Alley. But, uh, you know, again, we're on here. We're talking about the Kickstarters all month long. Um, you know, Scott, give us a, you know, kind of precursor. Tell us what Marcus is. Give us a recap kind of of issue one and maybe a quick synopsis of what we're going to go for season uh, episode two or issue two, I should say. So, sure. Um, well, first, uh, you know, we uh, the first issue we had released with Soldier Publishing, which was uh, uh, Reggie Simmons from Reggie Collects. Um, and, you know, I'm always very thankful for him for basically making this dream come true. <laughs> uh, but then he uh, had taken another job, so he had to cut or close down his soldier publishing. And uh, John Hahn, who is my uh, the owner of the LCS here, uh, Jaff Comics, he called me up and said, hey, I want to back you. So let's start our own publishing company and get the rest of the series out because I, I really like the series. And you know, like the idea. So let's get the story out. So, you know, I am, you know, again, blessed by, you know, having a, a, a benefactor that that's helping me out on this. So, you know, again, I have a lot of uh, thanks for to John for, you know, working with me on this. And, you know, we're looking at uh, some other projects that we're going to be doing uh, through Dreamscape. So, you know, this is definitely something that uh, we're looking to do in, on a long term. Um, but the 
story about Marcus. Uh, we start off in issue one. Uh, you meet uh, Carmen Gentile. He's a, a reporter. He's embedded with troops in Afghanistan. Um, and he is looking into this mysterious power figure and he survives a brutal assassination attempt. And during that process, he finds himself sort of uh, stuck in between, you know, two immortal centurions uh, that have been fighting since the crucifixion. So uh, in issue one, it really goes from the time, you know, Carmen, you meet, in, get introduced to Carmen. Uh, he starts looking and it goes up until uh, he's shot in the face with an RPG rocket. Um, now, the, the neat thing about it is that Carmen Gentile is a real person. So, like I said, Carmen's going to be there uh, at New York Comic Con with us. Uh, he's a friend of mine that I grew up with. Uh, he was a reporter embedded with troops in Afghanistan, and he did survive a an RPG rocket to the face. Um, yeah. It broke his orbital bone, cheekbone, broke his jaw. Uh, he ended up losing his eye and, and everything. So, um you know, I do use him as as sort of inspiration for this this character. And uh, Carmen's doing the intro video on their Kickstarter, correct? Yeah, yeah. So he he did uh, he uh, filmed a uh, a little intro onto that, and and we tacked on you know sort of my my little take on it, you know the the series as well. So um, if you want to check out the Kickstarter, you know you can see the video. Um, we have a lot of different things, you know, that we're, we're putting together, you know, all the different packages. We even have shirts with the, uh, the Marcus, uh, Centurion, uh, <laughs> on it. <laughs> uh, it had a lot of people that really liked the shirt. So the, it was pretty cool. cool. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it, it definitely is something that was different, but, you know, for John and I to get everything started, you know, this was a, a great way to, to get things going. So. Yeah. So, um, issue one, I get, let me actually, let me, let me back up a little bit. So, you know, Reggie kind of went away, you know, and he, he did his own thing. How hard was it? Or, you know, what's the kind of the process to get dreamscape up and running, you know, for anybody out there who wants to maybe create like publishing company, like how much, how embedded are you with John to create mm -hmm. this publishing company and to look forward into more projects? Well, the, you know, so it, the, the, the process of us coming up with the, you know, to finally make the decision to do it was certainly a couple months. And, you know, and then once we did it, now you're registering, it's like starting a new business, right? You're registering the name of the company. And uh, John had a, um, uh, a beginning with a, a company, uh, a comic shop locally that was called Dreamscape Comics. So that's where the Dreamscape idea came from. But we also, you know, we're, want to bring ideas and and bring people's dreams to to life you know like this mm -hmm. like i said this was a dream of mine to have my own comic book and you know we're we're working with a few a few other people that you know we're kind of looking at their stories and they're they're pretty good so you know we're looking to bring those under the banner as well um from the side of it business business wise john handles that side of it he's a very successful businessman he's got a a very popular comic shop here in in bethlehem pennsylvania so you know, he, he's, he has more of the business mind, uh, myself, I'm more on the, on the graphic side. I read the scripts, I'm reading the, the stories. Um, we're going to be looking for artists and, and things like that to, to do these, uh, these other stories and, and whatnot. So, um, I'm more, I'm embedded with it pretty well. Uh, I do have a full-time job, so, <laughs> so it's, it's all my extra time goes, goes there. So, but, uh, it's a lot of fun. So real talk, obviously, because, you know, you put your heart and soul into the first issue, right? And then you guys kind of came up with a little bit of a roadblock. How hard was it to kind of like more or less pick yourself up from the bootstraps and kind of like, okay, back to basics. Like right now I got to go back and now we got to do a publishing company before I can even go on to the second issue. I mean, that's a little disheartening, right? Like, I mean, how did you, how did you power? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I was all set to, to go with Swolger for the whole the whole six issue, you know, mini series and um, to get it pulled out, you know, the rug pulled out from under you. It's yeah. But, you know, I, I always look at it as, you know, things, things don't come easy, right? That's life. You know, things happen and you just sort of roll with the punches. I mean, I kind of figured, well, if, if I'm going to have to do it on my own, I will. Um, at that point I was like, I've got three kids in college. I've got, you know, I've got a regular job. So, you know, does this, does this take a backseat for a couple of years? But, 
you know, when John called me up and said, Hey, listen, I think this, I think we can make this work. I think we can, you know, we can really get this going. Um, so, you know, that's when we, we sort of jumped in and, and yeah. kind of went full bore on it. So, and once, I've, once it started going, then it was momentum yeah. and, and, you the know, excitement came we, back, we, right? Yeah. yeah. And then once we set the goal of, of releasing at, at Comic-Con again, so last year we released issue one at Comic-Con and we said, okay, it's been a year. We lost all the momentum from the initial, you know, the initial release. But now that we've got Dreamscape going, we're going to release issue two at Comic-Con. We have a, a special at Comic-Con. I have a, a, this is the, this is the Comic-Con exclusive. So this is the, the sort of the bloody version mm -hmm. of the A cover. Uh, we have 100 of these printed. If you order that and the reprint of issue number one, which has a different cover um, and it's under our Dreamscape banner uh, at CBC and get uh, one of the books graded, you'll get a free issue number two of the, the regular cover A. Nice. So that's sort of our, our you know special that's going there um, at, CB, at the CBCS booth. Uh, so, you know, again, it's we wanted to shoot for something and kind of keep that momentum rolling. Um, we're giving the artists a little bit of a break, but we're going to go right into issue number three, probably in a couple of weeks, right after the con. Once everything, oh, nice. once everything breaks down, then we're, we're going right into, into issue three. So um, script wise, like I said, I'm rewriting part of the script to make our deadline for Comic-Con. I did have to cut out some pages of uh, issue two, but it's at a certain point, like it's a, it, it's at a perfect break point. It, it leaves at a, at a, at a little bit of a, a cliffhanger. Um, that next issue is going to be called escape from New York. Uh, so I'm writing in a, in a John wick style action, you know, packed right. uh, issue on that one. Uh, and then yeah. we'll go right into ancient Rome uh, okay. in, in issue four. Yeah. Ooh. I got a chance to read issue two. So I, I kind of can see why it would be called that. So <laughs> Who uh who was the cover artist on um on the new cover uh issue one right there that you held up? The issue one, so I have this yeah. is uh this was artwork that Chase Cowan, the original artist for issue one, okay. had done, but we didn't use. Mm -hmm. So um I said, Well, since we're doing a reprint, we're just gonna use this artwork uh for cool, the and it yeah. it's 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 pretty cool. Yeah. And then it gives the, me old uh, guard the, vibes. It, that's yes. exactly what I wanted. Yes. I, it looks like I it wanted. Looks to, like, I wanted. Yeah, it's so clean, yes. dude. Yeah. So that's I really wanted that uh, that look and feel for that cover. And then uh, Scott Svankara, uh, my buddy from college, he did this as uh, the issue two. This is the A cover, and then the bloody version is going to be the uh, the uh, uh, New York Comic Con. And then we have Jaff's cover, which was done. By the same artist who did the Centurion uh, for Jaff last time, my my friend Tom uh, Aresto, he did this cover, which is available on the Kickstarter, uh, cool. which is an homage to Conan Number One. <laughs> yeah, very, very classic, very bright colors. Yeah, yeah, definitely badass. So you know, I know you changed. So you changed artists for one to two. Talk about your team for issue two. Who do you got doing uh, the art on the inside for your writing yeah so the interior artist is oliver dowling uh he is a uh, kubert school graduate um he's a friend of liz charlin uh we were trying to get chase to to do issue two you know i wanted him back but he was uh, unavailable um oliver's art is similar but different than chase's um so i mean i was happy with the way that uh, that he did things especially I mean, I'll be completely honest. We did this book. He put out the book in literally under a month. So to get the whole book done in under a month, I'm ecstatic. So he did a fantastic job. He was able to capture, you know, the the story of what I wanted. Um, you know, this this one is this second issue. It deals a little bit more with the PTSD uh, that Carmen had. Um, there's there's a scene we did, like I said, I did have to cut down. There's the one scene that's in here. It's two pages. It was four pages. There's no dialogue, but it goes to, uh, it goes to a, a specific song 
by nine inch nails, the just like you imagined. Uh, so if you're, I have a Spotify uh, code in there. So if you go into Spotify and scan that, or if you at the top of the the box, it'll pull up that song mm -hmm. uh, in on YouTube. And if you play that song while you're reading or going through those frames, it it sort of fits exactly how I wanted that song because it's it's this you know just this I feel that I, I really Nine Inch Nails is probably one of my favorite uh, bands oh, but yeah. that song has such a, a pull on it um, and is such an emotional pull on that song I felt that it went perfectly with the with the the story. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, I love what you've done with the the music and how even in the first issue, like the playlist that went along with it and all the embedded yep. stuff that you added to it was very we talked about it last time when we had you on, that it was it's so unique and it seems almost like it's weird that no one's doing that, right? Because it's almost like you're ahead of the you're ahead of your time with this. It yeah. almost feels like you shouldn't be like, right. It's like, why isn't anyone else doing this kind of type of things? It's not like technologically that's just like super advanced by any means. Right. It's just like, no one's really doing that, which is yeah. cool. Man. Well, I, I mean, very cool. I, I was laughing because my wife goes, well, can you like, you know, can you, can you trade, you know, trademark or copyright that? I'm like, no, it's, it's using technology. <laughs> it's using existing tech. If I came up with the QR codes right. and that would be something different, but I said, you know, Marvel and DC, they have these huge studios. They could do animations. And yep, I, I you know, the, the, yeah. the videos that in the first issue that Carmen shared with us that you're able to scan and like the flashback scene that takes you to that firefight that goes to that scene. I mean, to me, that is just amazing. Mm -hmm. It just draws you into the story. You know, even the video of him getting shot with the RPG, that's in the book too. But when you scan that QR code and you're reading the book and then you're seeing this actual video, I said, if Marvel were to say, listen, we're just going to take a little five minute clip of, you know, uh, you know, we'll have our animators do something. How, mu how much are you going to expand mm -hmm. on a two dimensional art form that I mean, you have, let's face it, you want more kids reading comics. Well, you've got to compete with the Xbox and PlayStation yeah. and all that stuff. This is a way to do that. You give them some moving action and, and things like that. I mean, if they need somebody to, to, you know, if they want to hire me and, and I'll bring them some ideas, <laughs> I'm more than happy to. <laughs> no, the house of ideas to, to is, is low on ideas, dude. So they need you. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, it was like <clears throat> they do that for like the events. Zach, you've probably seen these. On yeah. You, you know, the, like they'll do it for whatever Batman yeah, event, a DC an animated event, like trailer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But they're always they actually lame, have though. a good animation. Yeah. And even if it brought you to the page where even if it was like two pages and it was interactive and, and the character spoke. So you're reading it and seeing it or listening to it because that's the same thing like buying a book and listening to it on Audible. It, it's the same mm -hmm. thing. But you. You're clearly doing something that the big guys aren't doing. Yeah. You're taking, you know, a, di a different chance, a different turn. Yeah, like like Zach said earlier, like what you did with issue one, and then like you just said earlier, you have the Spotify thing with Nine Inch Nails. What other what other stuff is in issue two? You know, uh, you to, kind of embedded. Yeah, in, yeah. In, no, there is tease it out there. Oh sure, sure. Um, because we're dealing with, uh, like I said, this one is more of a deals with a, a little bit deeper and and. In Carmen's book, he talks a lot about the, you know, the PTSD that he had right after getting shot and stuff like that. So um, I do have codes in here that will take you to, uh, you know, the, the, the hotline. And I even have there's one part where it's just written on the wall um, that everybody's life matters. You know, mm -hmm. if you are feeling alone, if you're feeling, you know, isolated or something. It's, you know, suicide is never an option. It shouldn't be an option. There's always somebody that you can call and reach out to. So there's a couple resources that you can scan within the book um, to help with that. So, uh, you know, I there's a couple other song thing, you know, a couple other songs. This one doesn't have as many QR codes in it, but there are a couple other song uh, QR codes and, and Spotify codes that'll pull you in. So. Cool. The the next issue and actually the issue after uh, we've got some I've got some cool stuff lined up for it, so 
Sweet too. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited. I, you know, I, I loved it when it came out the first time around. I was really pumped for it, and uh, I love the story. I think it's a great. I mean, we talked about it last time about how it kind of, you know, it's got that mix of modern with lore, with like, I don't, don't want to talk about like kind of like biblical themes, obviously, of course, and like the supernatural as well. It's like this this fun mixture of everything, man, and that's like right up my alley. I mean, that's everything I like. Like, I love biblical lore supernatural oh, yeah. i mean honestly superheroes are kind of the lamer aspect of comic books and like real talk they're just the more successful ones right but uh i kind of like all the other stuff better it's definitely a little cooler so well i was the uh the other what was it two shows ago when you guys were talking about the new series that are coming out that they're doing the biblical in, yeah. in modern set oh, i'm yeah, like IDW, i'm interested yeah. to see I yeah know. i'm in, interested to see what idw does with that because that's you know yeah, I'm not the really most cool. religious guy in the world, but those could be some really cool, cool stories. So. Yeah, for sure. Definitely some cool modern stuff. If IDW does it right, yeah, you could definitely see a a, def a change for their publishing company for Ooh. sure. So, yep. Scott, kind of, how did you fix? Because I, you know, Carmen was kind of talking about this last week with his series going to be uh, twelve issues. Kind of, how did you make it? You know, only you know six, you know, not like ten or fifty. You know, like what kind of made you do? the shorter aspect because he talks about it he talked about it last week saying you know if you have it ongoing then people don't want to pick it up but he kind of focused more on 12 and, and kind of kept cutting it down where did why yeah. did you land on six um i mean the the story arc that i had it just kind of fell that way i wanted to keep it as lean as possible um i mean you're talking about a guy who's lived for a couple thousand years so could he turn into a, an ongoing series? Sure. If everybody loves the Marcus series, I could pull other stories. I'm sure I could write other stories, in, you know, in different timelines, mm -hmm. you know, similar to the way that, you know, Keanu Reeves is doing with Berserker. Um, but I mean, the story that, that I wanted to tell the story that I had, it sort of fit within, within that. Now I may be bumping just because we've had to make a few adjustments. It may extend out to eight, um, only because of, of changes that I've had to do to the story, mm -hmm. but I, I won't go much, I won't go further than that. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. I'm like you guys, I don't, you know, I, I, let's keep it short, sweet. You know, I, I want to keep it, you know, more, the next couple issues are going to be pretty action packed and, and things like that. You know, I, I want to keep everybody's interest. I want to keep them, you know, keep them wanting more. Mm -hmm. So if everything goes according to plan, what's kind of your timeline rough timeline of course everything changes like you said issue three coming out you're starting uh, working on it and then like what are you looking at next year 2025 how many issues you think you'll get out well i think what we're going to do is probably january i think probably february is when we're going to have issue three um cool. like i said right after we're finished with con and we close some things down i'm we already i will have the script for three Rewrote, rewritten, um, probably right after, probably a week or two after uh, near Comic Con. So I want to, you know, we've got the holidays and stuff like that. So I know that there's not going to be, but like I said, we really pushed, and and Oliver did a, and uh, Beth, uh, Charland, uh, who did all the lettering in issue one, she did the lettering in issue two. They really cranked everything out literally within uh, less than a month. I mean, Beth had everything lettered, you know, so fast as he was cranking out the pages, she was getting it, everything done. So we're probably looking at, at, uh, no later than February to have issue three and then probably uh, May, uh, probably May somewhere in May. Um, we may shoot for, um, right after free comic book day, uh, Philsburg has, uh, the, uh, the comic-con, uh, mm -hmm. at the high school, uh, that the one teacher, she has a, a comic and anime club and each year they do a comic con at Phillipsburg high school in Phillipsburg, New Jersey. Um, and we're, you know, John is very big supporters of the school and, and of the club. So we may do a release at, at that comic con, oh, that's cool. um, so at May. So, you know, that'll be a, that would be a good, good time. So, yeah, I mean, that's what, that's what we want to shoot for is, is pretty much like an every three month cadence. Nice, man. Awesome. Yeah, that's the way you got to do it. You just got to keep it. Got to keep the people engaged, and you need to have yep. it. You know, you can't you can't take 
a year off. But I like what you're doing. You're doing a Kickstarter for issue two, but you're giving mm-hmm. people the option for the reprinted number one, different cover, which is cool. You know, like like uh, Zach said, definitely old guard field. As soon as you, yeah. as soon as the word started coming out of your mouth, I was like, yes, that's. Exactly I know. I saw. I in fact, I was looking. I wasn't ignoring. Like I was looking at my phone because I was like, okay, who does the cover for old guard? And I went to look up who on CLZ, like who the cover <laughs> artist was. So that when I asked you the question, I'm like, oh, that's the. I was going to pretend like I knew all oh, the co- artists for old guard. I just knew that, but no, it totally looked like it's like, that's completely old guard. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love, I old guard is one of my favorite series. Oh, so I, I really love come that. Back it's too. so good. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I, I, when I saw that, I was like, Oh, I definitely want to do an old guard. So we have a digital version of uh, issues one and two um, that it's on the Kickstarter. And I kind of did, you know, sort of an old guard type cover with Marcus and Carmen um, and uh, and uh, Cassius on the cover. So we'll have that available from the on the digital side. But, you know, I just love that cover. So, mm-hmm. you know, we'll, pro- we'll pretty much be doing one for for each one of the books. So cool. And then regarding the Kickstarter, um, let's kind of just sure. briefly talk, you know, some of the, the, the pledges and, and the stuff that you can get. So there's the yep. uh, exclusive for Jaff. You know, and then what what other stuff do you have for for Marcus issue two? Yeah, so we have the reprint of uh, issue one. We have issue two, the A cover. Um, there is, uh, we do have some of uh, issue one that was under Swolger Publishing. So there have been a few people that wanted the spot foil that we have. And what John did is... Um, he has a laser engraver and he engraved the cover with the Marcus and those are numbered. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, um, it has the trade dress engraved in the bottom. Uh, so it, it looks really, really cool. So we have that. Um, and we have the t-shirts, which like I said, it's, it's the Marcus Centurion from the Jaff cover, um, of issue one. And, uh, I'm pretty sure. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at them right now. I think you got them all. Yeah, yeah. That's- yeah. The crazy thing is, once we got onto the Kickstarter, it we we've been trying to trying to update the pictures, but it won't let us. Dude, side note: we- Kickstarter on like your phone when when you've pledged, you can't go back and like see the pledges. So I was like, I was like, well, let me just see what the pledge options are. Why he's talking about it? So I went. Yeah, and because I've already pledged. I can't. Well, so it's like mother effer. So then I went on the, the the desktop, and I can do it on the desktop. I can see, but it's so bogus, dude. Kickstarter, like you, you can't like go back and see. Like, how would you want to? It's such a pain. Like, if you wanted to shop more and like, oh, you know what? I really yeah. like that one a little bit more. So, no, sorry. I mean, and and to be answer. perfectly honest, we had the Kickstarter going before we had. I had the finished artwork <laughs> for the for the covers. <laughs> And it was, I mean, it, again, it was just because of the time that it took for us to start Dreamscape Publishing and then for us to finally say, okay, yes, we're doing, New York Comic Con is our is our goal. Mm-hmm. Um, I had Tom and Scott were working on covers. I had Oliver working on the, you know, the interior. So in the, if you go to the Kickstarter, you'll see the interior, his pencils. Uh, I stuck the pencils up for issue two. We put some of the artwork from issue one in there. Um, I think I did a pretty good job <laughs> in laying it out. Um, yeah. And we, we, you know, I was trying to be as as thorough as possible um, in answering, you know, with a Q and A. There's a, some good stuff in the Q and A and and whatnot. So, yeah, yeah. That's Kickstarter true. is so weird. We, we we were talking about this too with, with Carmen last week. It's like when you look on the side, everything's on the side, but. Until you actually hit, if you put, you want to back the pet project and then you mm-hmm. actually get more options, like the t-shirts don't show up. The additional options don't really show you on the main page. Yeah. You mm-hmm. actually have right. to click, you know, back up, you know, I want to do this one and then you can do the t-shirt. There's um, the, uh, what's, and then real quick, just because if you don't know, what's the blindsided by the Taliban? Like what's. Oh, that's, that's Carmen, Carmen, uh, mm-hmm. Carmen's book. So mm-hmm. that was the one thing. Yeah. It wouldn't show that at all. And we were like, why won't this go on? Because some people wanted to, they've reached out to me and said, hey, what was the name of Carmen's book? Because we want to read it. So the, you know, the, his book is called Blindsided by the Taliban, where he talks about the whole incident of him getting shot and, and whatnot. And honestly, if you want to read something that's 
pretty wild. And Carmen is, he has a, a pretty dark sense of humor. <laughs> So there's some I wouldn't things be surprised, that he talks about. Right? I mean, hell, dude. Yeah, there's some things that he talks about in his book that are just hilarious. That you know, um, it 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 is a good read. But uh, yeah, we when we were trying to add things like that, it just we were having difficulty. So uh, a friend of mine said, "Hey, next time, here's a person that you can talk to at Kickstarter that will help guide you through laying all these things out and probably help you set it up a little bit better." Um, but like I said, I mean, we just kind of rushed to get everything on because I figured oh, I'll be able to go in and change the picture whenever I want. Yeah, no, we can't, <laughs> I couldn't do that. I was I was a little upset. So I did, you know, I did update. It allows you to update the um, the main story and the main information there. So I did put the covers um, on there. Mm -hmm. And we basically said if if we get fully funded, everybody's going to receive uh, signed Covers. Yeah, I saw that. That's really cool. Nice. So, well, um, before we get out of here, for anybody that doesn't know, or like, like, I kind of want to ask, how do I want to ask this question? How does someone, I guess, if they don't know about this book, like, why would, why should they pick up this book? Not, not the synopsis um, of the book, not like, yeah, you know, what you've told, whether you want to hear the first time or the second time. You know, because we talk about books, you know, you listen to us and I, we appreciate that. Thank you for coming sure. on here. And thank you for listening to us. So that's always good. And, you know, we talk books on a weekly basis, whatever Zach and I read. And, you know, we kind of give the people our review and maybe why you should check it out. Sometimes, like, what's the synopsis of this? But why should people pick up Marcus? Like, who would like this book? Um, anybody who I think it's it's unique. I mean, it, it, I think it's a unique story. Um, and I think like we talked about before, what I've done with sort of the QR codes and things like that, I think it, it brings a, a different, um, layer of interactivity to a regular story. So it's not just reading it. It allows you to interact with a book. Um, I wish I could do more, you know, I would love to be able to, to, you know, be able to, to push more videos and, and things like that. But you know the things I, that I think we've added or I've added to the story. I think it it makes it compelling and and certainly interesting enough. Everybody that sees it, you know, they always comment on that's such a cool idea, that's such a cool video. That's you know, it it, it does get a lot of you know. I do get a lot of uh, of people telling me that they you know reaching out on Instagram and and whatnot, saying that it's something that they've never seen before or never seen and done this way. So if you want something that's a little bit different, a, an interesting story, I think this is, you know, certainly for that. Um, it does have military. I mean, we are talking a little bit of, you know, so it's, it's not for little kids. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of language. My, my, my okay. mother yeah. told me there was a little salty language in there, but uh, <laughs> you know, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I think it's it's more of a adult content, but, you know, I think it, it gives you something, something different. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. Zach, anything else? No, I'm excited, man. Uh, you know, always been a big supporter of what you're doing with Marcus. And I'm, I'm happy you got it back off the ground, man. And uh, I'm, I'm pumped, dude. I'm pumped to read it for sure. So, well. I definitely want to say thank you to you guys and on the inside cover. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Nice shiny, shiny ad for the Comic-Con podcast. Um, we should have done something then, cooler with our QR code. <laughs> it should have led to like <laughs> a secret video of Justin and I. Oh my so, God. Oh, imagine go. that. Yeah. But I would like to say again, say thank you to CBCS um, for hosting us at, at New York Comic-Con. Um, and also the other person or the other team that, uh, helped support us was hip comic. Um, you know, they, uh, put an ad in the book and, and we certainly, you know, thank them for, for their support. Uh, so, you know, again, if you want to, you know, please check out the Kickstarter, if you can support it, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, share it. If you can share it, um, that's even, you know, that helps out a lot. You can find me on on Instagram and, uh, you know, I have a, a few links and things posted on Instagram and Facebook. Um, so, you know, again, thank you all. I thank everybody for their support. And, you know, I, I look forward to keeping this going. 
So yeah. yeah. So um, again, Scott's book is you know it's it's in process right now on Kickstarter. So the earliest that you're listening to this is on October the 16th. You still got a week left. Um, we're you know closing in on that goal. So within the next week, at least if you can get into it, grab it now. Um, so you don't miss it. And then if you're at New York Comic Con, uh, real quick, tell everybody the places that you're going to be at New York Comic Con this weekend one last time. Yep, we'll be at the CBCS booth on Friday from 12 to 2 in the on the main floor. And then on Saturday and Sunday, it is 12 to 3 uh, at, the, at the CBCS booth in Artist Alley. Awesome. Cool. Well, again, Scott, uh, we'll, both, we'll see you this weekend. Um, oh, absolutely. That's coming yeah. up, you know, so we'll definitely be stopping yeah, by the booth. Um, you know, and have to go hopefully... grab a few, uh, grab some dinner and a, and a few ales. Oh, dude, I hope so. Man. my arm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't have any plans Thursday or Friday, right, Zach? Yeah. We just want to eat and drink. That's pretty much all. <laughs> I'm, go. That's all I'm really going up there for anyway, dude. Yeah, Period. I know, I know. So, um, awesome. So again, Scott, thanks so much for popping on here. And again, everybody, make sure um, all the links will be in the descriptions so you can back uh, Marcus and, and, and just follow Scott's you know, uh, journey through, through this. And, um, we'll, we'll catch you all on our normally scheduled episode later in the week. Cool. Thanks everybody. Later. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks for the support. Absolutely, sir. Hey, comic book collectors. Do you want to protect what you collect? Do you hate when your comic books slide around in your short box or you need to turn them sideways just so they don't bend or fall over? Well, look no further than sidekick supplies. Their product fits firmly inside your comic box. So you don't need to worry. And not only is their product made in the USA, but also ships free directly to your doorstop. Check out our sponsor, Sidekick Supplies at SidekickSupplies.com and use the code Comic-Con15 for 15% off your purchase. Believe me, you'll be ordering more than one.